By the way, if, if you did miss uh, the key, uh, Dr. Torrance, a keynote address, it will be on our website. Um, uh, not sure exactly when, but we are going to get it up on our website as well as the other lectures uh, that are today fairly soon. Dr. Thorin is Professor Emeritus of Economics at Jawaharlal uh, Nehru University. He is the Chair of the Indian Council for Social Science Research, Co-Director of the, Co-Founder of the Indian Institute uh, for Dalit Studies, and I'm proud to say a visiting scholar here at our Center for Global Development and Sustainability. In an autobiographical essay that he wrote called Passage to Adulthood, Perceptions from Below, he wrote, the caste system and its reflection on touchability with thousands of subcastes is like so many stinking ponds which have, which have polluted life for all those who came in contact with them. What we want, he said, is a flowing river with fresh and pure water. In an article written about him in the Global Poverty Series of the organization Academic Stand Against Poverty, Dr. Thorat is, is richly described as follows. Thorat was reared in humble circumstances as a member of the Maha Dalet group north, uh, in uh, Maharashtra state northeast of Bombay, by long tradition, Mahas and other Dalits in villages across India have been forbidden from living alongside upper caste residents and from holding any but low status or dirty jobs. He tells of a social awakening for himself and others beginning in the 1950s under the inspirational leadership of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, the architect of India's constitution, and himself a Mahar. After struggling to acquire a primary and secondary education in various Christian, missionary, and other schools that would accept all the pupils. Dr. Thorat enrolled in Bedkar's Myland College of Arts. There he joined a student body composed almost exclusively of Dalits. He deepened his study of Bedkar's writings and Buddhism, a religion to which many lower caste Hindus converted, as we know, at Bedkar's urging, and assumed leadership roles among Dalit student activists. He also became determined to pursue further study on caste discrimination. Later at JNU, his initially proposed PhD thesis topic on untouchability and occupational linkages was declared by JNU's economics department as too far outside the mainstream to be acceptable. He was later accepted for doctoral studies at JNU's Center for the Study of Regional Development, but only to study a more traditional topic in agricultural economics. It was not until He's uh, serving as a visiting faculty member at the Iowa State University that Thorat had the opportunity to pursue theoretical and empirical studies on economic discrimination, which shaped his research on economics of caste and the problems of excluded communities in India. There he began developing an approach to market economics that could take, take appropriate account of caste discrimination. As chairman of uh, India's main higher education funding body, the University Grants Commission from 2006 through 2011, Thorat oversaw the creation of 32 centers for the study of social exclusion and inclusive policy at universities around India. Dr. Thorat will speak to us today on reading the annihilation of caste to understand the social and economic inequality in India, past and present, and comments on Ambedkar's critique of caste. My pleasure again to welcome Dr. Thorne. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Simon, for the introduction. Um, I would like to avoid uh, the, uh, the repetition of what I said yesterday. So I will. Uh, focus on the major text, uh, namely the alienation of caste, and the central theme uh, in, the, in the book. Uh, we had a very excellent presentation by Rajesh Sampath and, uh, and Lou, uh, really good. Uh, so, and I am not also capable and qualified to speak on the philosophical aspect of the Trumpet society. So I'll confine to with 20 minutes to the central message of annihilation of caste and related to the uh, present problem. Uh, annihilation of caste uh, 
is a lecture which he was supposed to de uh, deliver uh, in by an organization call, called Jat Path Road of Mandal, that is the organization which wanted to annihilate cars in Lahore. Uh, and he accepted, that was the first invitation that he accepted by an organization which was headed by Hindu. They asked him the lecture in return, he prepared and sent to them. And they objected to some part of that lecture. The main objection uh, if you go to the introduction war that Dr. Ambedkar mentioned that this would be my last lecture before the uh, Hindu, any Hindu organization and they asked him to remove that sentence and a couple of other sentences which he refused so his lecture was cancelled and then he published that lecture separately. The, if you look at annihilation of caste, uh, the annihilation of caste is not uh, a book uh, with a greater analysis of caste system as such. He has done that in the 1916 paper that he wrote in Columbia University. But the focus of the annihilation of caste is the solution to the problems. How do you annihilate caste? Uh, how do you remove the caste system? So that, that was the central theme of the caste system. And he almost began with an understanding that caste system is based on the principle of inequality. Uh, it based on the principle of injustice and it it based on the principle of uh, principle which do not uh, promote fraternity. He take it for granted because he has written earlier uh, on, on that aspect. But if you look at the generation of caste, why did it, why did it become so popular, intensely popular among the I think that, that that's a very, very concise and very uh, well thought views of Ambedkar which still remain with us and his analysis is still uh, very true. But I think one has to read uh, the other background material also. If you look at the volume third of Ambedkar's writing and speeches, there are three essays. Philosophy of Hinduism, essential feature of caste system, unique feature of caste system. These three essays seem to be almost the notes that Ambedkar prepared and use it for annihilation of caste. In fact, there are quotations from the philosophy of Hinduism which he has directly put into annihilation of caste. Division of labor. Uh, caste is not a division of Labor, it's a division of labor and several other arguments. So, annihilation of caste is an output of his very rigorous analysis of the caste system. Uh, what I will do is very briefly that I will talk about a central point in annihilation of caste, but also draw from his last statement, last writer, that is, that is state and minority, which is his ultimate view on the how to deal with the problem of caste and poverty. One can also refer uh, his last word, last speech, which is a very important and marvelous one, that is Karl Marx and Buddha, which are delivered in Kathmandu, World Buddhist Conference. And it is very, very important if compare Buddha and Karl Marx. And you can get the ideas of Dr. Abdelkar thinking on that issue. Now, annihilation of caste basically talks about that how to annihilate caste, how to remove caste system. He considered all the views that were present at that point of time. One was Gandhiji. As I said yesterday, with the emergence of Gandhiji in the early 20s, uh, what emerged was some sort of a Gandhism. Which Dr. Ambedkar not only dealt in an elation of, elation of caste, but very, very competently in a book called What Congress and Gandhi Have Done to the Untouchable. There is a last chapter called Gandhism. And I think that is one of the best analysis ever I have read on on Gandhism. Otherwise, there are many writers of Gandhism, they tend to be dishonest. Because some of the ideas of Gandhi are so archaic. You know, Gandhi supported caste system up to 1925. Nobody could defend him. But the writer of Gandhi will hide those facts. And some of his writing in Gujarati journal also. But uh, uh, the, the important thing that he took Gandhi in the nation of caste, his solution. Then he dealt with Marxist. Then he dealt with Arya Samajist, uh, one of the uh, organization which tried to reform Hinduism internally. They discarded the concept of caste and talk in favor of Varna. And then at the end, he also did with Hindu nationalists who wanted Hinduism as a basis of governance of the Indian society of some sort. And then by rejecting all four of them, he comes to his own position, which I will just uh, discuss very, very briefly. But there we will have to enter into state and minorities and other writing of his. Now coming to the Gandhism, 
there, there are three principles of Gandhism which he has discussed in uh, that chapter on Gandhism and also in a relation of caste, but I will very, very briefly summarize because we don't have time. Gandhiji was in favor of the, uh, the economy based on private property, first thing. But Gandhiji also developed the concept of trusteeship. They say that the property owning classes are the trustees of the poor. They will work for the poor uh, through philanthropy and through charity. So don't disturb the distribution of ownership, redistribution of asset. Let that be with uh, those who own them. And they can be the trustee of the poor, they can be the trustee of the, uh, the, the, the backward caste. That is the economic concept. Second, of course, social organization, namely the caste system. Up to 1920-25, Gandhiji supported caste system in return. That I support caste system simply because it's being, being order and it being limits, that's the word he used. But in, after 1925, he began to criticize caste system, that caste system is, uh, is something which, 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 which doesn't control, it also leads to some sort of inequality and he discarded the concept of caste system, but replaced it by the Varna system. There is a difference between caste and Varna system. The Varna system which is given in Gita, which is given in uh, other religious textbooks like Veda, is that you just classify the people on the basis of their occupation. <coughs> if, if you are a teacher, you can be called Brahmin. If you are into military, you can be called Kshatriyas. So labeling of people depending on their occupation qualities is something like a concept of Varna. So Gandhiji say that I believe in Varna. We replace it by Varna. But Varna at least is a liberating force. I come to the criticism by, uh, by, by Ambedkar of this concept of Varna system. And third, of course, in general, Gandhiji had a lot of reservation about the Western and scientific civilization. You have to read this. Uh, he, he, he proposed the traditional village system, he proposed the traditional technology. So that is an aspect which also Dr. Ambedkar did <coughs> in Gandhism. Uh, Ambedkar criticize each one of them. He say, trusteeship cannot work. And he has his views which I expressed yesterday, that caste system is essentially based uh, and it, it creates the feeling of isolation and exclusion. It develops contempt and hatred between the caste and there is no scope for public charity. There is no scope for public concern. And he, he was quite clear that, uh, that the, the Hindus, those who own property, they will not be able to on the role of the trustee for the uh, others. In fact, in one of his essays, he gave the list of the philanthropic organization uh, started by the whites for the blacks, or African American in USA, and started by Hindus, philanthropic activity for the Dalits. And you see so much of disparities. And prove the point that concept of trusteeship is not correct. What you require is the redistribution of the means of production like land and access to industry completely opposite to Gandhi. Social system, obviously he came for heavy criticism on, the, uh, on, on Gandhi. Let me take that concept of Varna system, how Gandhi's Varna system was more, uh, more backward than that of even the <coughs> The Gandhiji would not only classify the people on the basis of their occupation, but he would put an additional condition. And, he, and that is why most of the academicians you know, writing on Gandhi, they are reluctant to, they hide this, but Ambedkar was very clear. What Gandhi says is that you should have, everybody should have access to knowledge. Because in traditional caste system, knowledge was confined to only <coughs> Here Gandhi opened up knowledge for everybody. But don't use knowledge as a source of income, as an occupation. Continue to have your traditional occupation. And Ambedkar then came very heavily in any relation of caste, that this is worse than the caste system. That you can have a knowledge, access to knowledge, but you cannot use as a source of mobility. Uh, <coughs> third, fourth point that I would like to mention, and directly this comes as a solution of any issue of caste, where he dealt with the first section itself. The solution given by Mahatma Gandhi for removal of caste system in the beginning was interdining between the caste, develop commensality, endomosis, bring them together. So interdining was the solution given by Gandhiji, but Gandhiji opposed intercaste in the beginning. Ambedkar criticizes very heavily. Say interdining and bringing them together will not help. So he rejects the solution <coughs> given by Gandhiji.
So I mean, I think uh, I will stop here. I have mentioned what are the differences uh, of Ambedkar with Gandhiji as far as the relation of class is concerned. No solution given by uh, Gandhiji, either on the front of economics or on social uh, reform of social order, Ambedkar really accepted. He came very, very heavily on Gandhi's thinking on this. Then he took on Marxist. To the Marxist, uh, if you if you combine state and minority, and if you combine this lecture, Karl Marx and Buddha in Kathmandu, one can develop a combined view, but even in any relation of caste, he argued that yes, I believe with, this, with the goal of Marxism, that is to bring an economic inequality, that is to redistribute the resources. Which, which, way, which way you redistribute, that's another matter. You, you take over and then you distribute, but the goal of Marxism are at place, you require an economic inequality. But the, he differed very vehemently with the weights. Ambedkar was out and out and out a Democrat. He, I, I come to the come to come to the end how he juggled with this concept of democracy, uh, with the freedom and liberty. I, I'll discuss that at the end because that is the uh, paradox that he was trying to deal with at the end of his life. So ways he said the dictatorship or proletariat or any sort of a totalitarian measures uh, we're not going to is not the way to deal with. And particularly in Indian society, he knew that since Hinduism has a overwhelming and massive impact on the people, it might take another turn. It might turn into a theocratic uh, alternative. It might take, it might, and given the authoritarian principle under Hindu social order, they are a lot more dangerous than, than the normal uh, uh, dictator scene. So, he, he wanted economic equality, but through the democratic ways and means. And he raised the question to the Marxists in any sort of caste. He asked them, can you, can you avoid the system of caste, the issue of caste, uh, even for realizing the objective of uh, Marxist revolution? The one of the premises that he, he took in the annihilation of caste is the following, that Marxists provide a central focus on economic forces and doesn't give <coughs> due attention, role to the non-economic factors. And caste was considered to be non-economic factor. Religion was considered to be non-economic factor, completely irrelevant. The economic factor is considered to be the predominant force in the history. Now Ambedkar raised this question, can you avoid caste in Indian context? And he raised very important question which, which are been there by the communist India today. He said, can you organize the worker? Marx says that all being worker and poor bring that fraternity between them. It is the fraternity and common pain and sorrow of worker will bring them together, form the political party and bring the revolution. He said, can you do it in India? He said, no. The worker are divided into caste. And you cannot unite them either for an offense or for a defense. That is his work in the nation of caste. You cannot organize Hindu either for an offense or for a defense because of differences. So you cannot organize worker also. That is why he established independent labor party. While the Communist Party was there in 1925, he established independent Labour Party where he said that along with class you have to have a caste. So the discrimination between the work on the line of caste will not bring worker together. It will develop a disunity. So they, therefore he said, appeal to the Marxists that you have to take handle the caste issue along with the uh, class issue, which Marxists did not do uh, even today. Now they have they, they began to eat. So he, dis he sort of rejected Five minutes. He sort of rejected that alternative of Marxism and uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the basis of ways and as well as on the basis of uh, uh, the goals. No, not on the goals, really. on the basis of ways and the non economic factor. In fact, I have quoted in one of my articles the engines uh, clarified later on that, uh, that the, the young Marxists give more emphasis on economic factor. Economic factor ultimately come to be an important factor but in the course of history even non-economic factor can be of importance and they have to be dealt and therefore Ambedkar argued that caste is important which Marxists will have to deal with and they will have to take a non-economic factor into account. Well, he also went to counter R.S. Samajist who says that instead of caste we should have worked a system and he opposed R.S. Samajist that why do you need this labeling? 
The old labeling will convert worker system into caste. You call professor a professor, you call a worker a worker, you call a welder a welder, you call a farmer a farmer. Why do you need this labeling of Varna, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra? Because it carries that meaning of caste. So he rejected all alternatives. Uh, Gandhi, Marxist, of course Hindu, 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 uh, Hindu alternative was based on caste and uh, certain modification. But finally, the central crux of the annihilation of caste is uh, the solution proposed by Dr. Ambedkar. And he said that if Hindu society will unite, it is only the dismantling of endogamy. Unless you have intercaste marriages, unless you have an intermixing of blood, uh, it won't bring endogamous, or it won't bring, I use the word social inclusion because I didn't understand the meaning of endogamous. Thank you very much for that. Intercaste marriages, he thought, is the only solution to remove caste system. But he went to step ahead, which I used yesterday. That why do people do not intermarry? Why do people do not inter die? Why do, do people do not inter associate? The reason is the religious based notion with which they work. So he said, you you are located the uh, cause, which is bringing the people together to marriage, but that is not the solution. The solution that you have to remove the faith of people in the Hindu dogmas and tell them that, that something that they are practicing as a way of their life is wrong. So his solution was really to radically change Hinduism and give an alternative which he gave later on. He, he talked about Buddhism as an ideology along with the economic system and uh, uh, he wanted to touch at the core of the uh, Hindu ideology, which lead to the, uh, inequality, it bring in fraternity, it bring injustices as such. Now, this is what the, the, the core of the uh, 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 annihilation of caste is. That you have to deal with the, uh, the doctrinal basis of Hinduism, which is a source of behavior of high caste, the philosophical element in the Hinduism. And when he issued a statement immediately, the conference had one that I was born as a Hindu, but I will not die as a Hindu and convert into other religion. But he waited for uh, 20 years. He made a statement in 1936, he converted to Buddhism in 1956, exactly after 20 years. But in between, Hindu did not change. So that is the crux, uh, that is the solution of alienation of caste. But I would like to supplement and end by saying that he extended it in state and minority, his last statement, that he was concerned very much, of, and there is a contribution here, I am not capable, philosopher and the political scientists are capable. He did, his, his main riddle was the, the dilemma between equity and freedom. He was for a freedom, therefore he, 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 he insists political democracy. He did not deviate from political democracy. But he knew, yes, one minute, he knew that political democracy undermines inequality. Political democracy only talks about the right to vote and adult personal political right, but it, it leaves the economic structure to the government. It doesn't make it, make it a part of the constitution. Economic equality, social inequality, solution have to be taken by the government. It doesn't talk much about much in the constitution. Constitution talk about goals, liberal constitution. It doesn't talk about instrument. So he said that Countries which are engaged in the political democracy experiment, they they have to they face the problem of inequality and bring democracy in, under danger also. Therefore, he did an acrobatic, and that acrobatic was he suggested socialism, a type of socialism which is called constitutional state socialism. He said we should learn from the experience of the Western. Western democracy only defines political structure, but it doesn't define economic structure. It leave it to the normal legislature to act it. A normal <coughs> legislature has uh, has their own interest, therefore they, they don't take economic policy which will remove inequality. Therefore he wanted to have a socialism of a sort in the constitution is, itself. So that constitution defined both political system structure, economic structure, of course social structure. So his concept was constitutional state socialism with parliamentary democracy, wherein he tried to resolve this dilemma of equity and freedom. Very committed to freedom, but very concerned about equity. 
And how do we incorporate into constitution? That was his dilemma, which he did, but he did succeed. Uh, the socialist principle and other came in directive principle as a guideline. It didn't become the part of the constitution. So I think uh, uh, these are some of the central messages that we get uh, from Ambedkar's annihilation of caste, a very, very powerful uh, test. The goal remains, the solution remains, and the problems that present today, they remain as he has rightly pointed out uh, uh, in annihilation of caste. And later they provide alternative to other writing. Well, thank you very much.